The oldest anarchy game mode on Hypixel is fraught with cheaters. Many are hackers, b-hoppers, closet cheaters, not so closet closet cheaters. Others are more imaginative with their rule breaking. We encourage players to be creative in art and design in a way that doesn't damage the experience of others. The final type of rule breaker is the exploiter. Exploiters abuse glitches to gain whatever advantage they possibly can, whether that be a fly exploit, duplication glitch, or anything of the like. However, these categories aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, someone who isn't afraid to break the rules in one area is likely to ignore them elsewhere, but very few reach even close to the levels of illicit activity that will be discussed today, all done by a single player. My name is Sudi, and welcome as we explore the story behind the pit's a secret supervillain. Hey Sudi, supervillain sounds like an exaggeration. Is it an exaggeration? No. The player I'm referring to is the biggest botter in the history of the game mode, who abused several duplication glitches, got several players to number one on the leaderboards, terrorized the entire game, changed the streaking meta, got into Conclave, and fooled everyone including Minikloon while doing it. The player I'm referring to is Fish Doop Fish Doop. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. The fish dupe let players dupe fish. To dish a fish into two requires a wish from you. Through the Wi-Fi you can't deny, a supply of fish will multiply. But soon sigh, cry, and say goodbye after mini Clune with a whoop went boop to the dupe. Alas, the legend lives on in a player not at spawn, the protector of Katie Khan. Fishdoop Fishdoop is an old account owned by a member of the Huntsman. He was a violently aggressive cheater and protected the Huntsman while they streaked. He changed the game in its entirety, an influence which can still be felt today. He hunted relentlessly and got so far as to be number one on the bounty's claimed leaderboard. There were rumors that this account was shared between Hazeliz, potentially Katie Khan, Minor Event, and maybe even others. Who is this elusive player? In fact, the account was never shared, and it was owned by one person. Fishdoop is none other than Ochil, one of the most respected people in the pit. Ochil started playing the pit when it was first released, but really got into the game in the summer of 2018. That summer, a duplication glitch, initially discovered by Potty and abused by Ben B, was leaked. Ocha learned of it, and this was his first dabble in the dark arts. Almost immediately after the exploit was patched, I learned of a bounty dupe from MC Panda. With OTDX, I'm Just a Fish, Major, Minor, Automized, Wolsey, and Ochil, a dupe group was created. The dupe worked by combat tagging someone with a bounty. After they were warped out of the lobby, the bounty would be claimed, but wouldn't be removed from the player. This process could be repeated indefinitely, so we used it to grind gold for our prestiges. This was around the time Major Event discovered the double login, and then didn't tell us. These screenshots here are from Ochil. Months later, in 2019, Ochil embarked on the most ambitious project yet, codename Damocles. He did this with Hazeliz and Kidcon, two of the pit's most notorious botters. Before that happened though, Ochil got his hands on a Robin Hood too. Back then, every arrow would automatically move to hit its target. This was incredibly powerful. On Season's map, there's an area above spawn where people can PvP, so Ochil went up there and started shooting arrows down. The arrows targeted the players who were in spawn, but since they had invincibility, the arrows didn't go anywhere. This seriously lagged out lobbies, and it was the same principle that allowed the Volley Wolf exploit to occur. Together with Major Event, Orr, and Katie Khan, fellow owners of Robin Hood 2s, they joined Major Events and spammed the crap out of them. The arrows collected mid-air and caused so much lag that the sidebar glitched out. One day, Hazel saw Prince Link and Potty using 20 bots in a dead lobby, and she got the idea of using the worst hacked client to bot. Not being able to reach the level Prince Link was at, though, she spoke to Potty, and he told her to use Oku Minebot. Hazel immediately purchased the program and figured out how to use it within a day. Ochil, upon discovering Hazel's botting prowess, invited her to a group chat with Katie Khan, and their adventures began. They planned to monopolize the botting practice and take it to its absolute limit. The first account they ever botted was Mausmeister on August 6, 2019. 
Afraid of a ban, they coded the mind bots to immediately leave the lobby if anyone joined. Getting caught was always in the back of their minds until one day, Hazel figured out the rotation glitch. On the pit, the map rotates every week on Tuesdays, and Hazel found out that lobbies stayed open around 5 hours after the rotation occurs. They could still be used if at least one player remained inside the lobby, meaning botters could go for hours on end, entirely unimpeded. After the map change, these lobbies were impossible to access unless someone was warped in. Hazel also realized the enchant Pit Blob, which spawns a slime that grows bigger with kills and can hit multiple players at a time, could kill the bots while the botter hides in spawn. Because they were the only ones who knew about the rotation exploit, they could fill the lobby completely with bots. Both Ochil and Hazel used OQ Mindbot to bring them in, since it takes a beefy computer to run dozens of bots from one account. Botting with 80 players causes one's level to increase incredibly quickly, so their productivity skyrocketed. Cade, for some reason, leaked the secret of rotation lobbies, and other botters started to use it as well. In a cave on Castle Map, there's an area in which minecarts naturally spawn. Hazel saw these and figured out they could be moved with fishing rods. Because she was bored, she brought five minecarts to spawn and took a screenshot with all her AFK accounts. Through this, she got the idea of bringing a player back to spawn wearing martyrdom pants in the minecart, but realized she could just use cheats to teleport her back up. Martyrdom spawns a whole bunch of creepers, so activating it in the safe zone can cause some serious damage. 14k views worth of damage. During this time, Hazel had the idea of using the minecarts to keep the blob in place. This doubled the efficiency of botting, since the blob wouldn't get pushed around by the bots. Hypixel moderators occasionally joined their lobbies, banned all the bots, but didn't ban them, so they realized that mods didn't have permission to give out bans for boosting. On August 10th, the Weasel account began. For the first time, the gang tried to get as much gold as possible. Over the next several months, they botted more than half a dozen accounts to Prestige 13 and beyond, getting killstreaks in the tens of thousands and gaining a combined total of hundreds of millions of gold. These accounts include Weasel, Fauna Sky, who went from Prez 0 to Prez 22 in one day, Yanelli, Colkiller, Disappointig, and Hazel Isn't. These accounts AFK'd in every lobby to buy the good auctions, including Feathers and Mystic Repair Kits. At the time in the IRL market, Feathers sold for $10 a pop, and Repair Kits were worth 2 Feathers each. The strategy used for maximum botting efficiency was quite sophisticated. Step 1, of course, was to bring in 80 bots and set up the blob and a minecart if it were on Castle Map. On the other maps, they put the blob in infinite water so it just floats. They'd also use martyrdom to push the villagers down into pit so items and perks could be bought and changed and prestiges could be attained without resetting their kill streak. Nowadays, you can only prestige every two hours. Back then though, there was no limit, and if they prestiged without going to spawn, their streaks wouldn't reset. Some of their botting accomplishments include, but aren't limited to, getting the first 10k streak, and later getting the highest streak in the history of Pit. This was done on the Disappoint Egg account, and it only ended 3 hours later after 62,000 kills when Ochil accidentally went into Spire and the streak was reset. They also got the first Pit account to ever have 8 digits worth of gold. On top of that, Cade, Ochil, and Hazel are the only people to ever create chickens and get eggs in the game. On the pit, an enchant called Devil Chicks will spawn chickens that explode moments after an arrow is shot. For some unknown reason, when that bow was used during a beast event with the 80 bots in the lobby, the chickens didn't explode, but instead reverted into their vanilla form. They laid eggs and Hazel and Ochil still have every single egg they got from that encounter. In late 2019, a player was messing around with fish when the lobby lagged. Moments later, he looked into his inventory and realized the fish had duplicated. After investigating, the player figured out how the glitch worked. As the year came to a close, the fish dupe was leaked and subsequently patched. On Castle Map, fish could be sold for 40 gold apiece, which meant that close to a million gold per hour could have been made. Mini Clune patched the exploit before the map rotation got around to Castle, so this glitch was never utilized to its fullest extent. Inspired by this, Ochil bought a new account and named it Fishdoop Fishdoop. He kept this account secret until the race to number one began. 
At this point in the game, a lot of players were tied for first place on the leaderboard. This was because the highest anyone could go was Prestige 30 level 120. That all changed on February 28th, 2020. However, to understand why that change was implemented, we must first go back a couple weeks earlier. I had just found out about the Volley Wolf exploit from Mathematics and Creature. We wondered about the possibility of using it to crash lobbies and potentially duplicate items. I knew that Ochil had experience in this area because he was part of the Robin Hood arrow exploit abuse, so we brought him in and started to lag out lobbies to an extreme degree. Even though we weren't able to duplicate with it, it was still tons of fun, especially seeing the reactions of the entire player base. These reactions included I'm a Squid Kid who joined one of our lobbies. Oh no! 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 Oh we did this until the exploit was patched, and that same patch added prestiges 31 to 35. Several players started to get on the grind, including Minor Event, KDCon, and Godhack. At this point in the game, the main issues in prestige wasn't XP, it was gold. Before a player can prestige, they must first reach 120, but also have to get the gold requirement. To solve their gold problems, they began to use an exploit originally discovered by Mathematics. To utilize the glitch, someone has to get 9 wolves with the wolf pack enchant and has them attack a player in dark pants in a 1x1 area. The wolves won't do any damage, so if the wolf wearer jumps up and down holding an item enchanted with critically rich, the game registers all of the hits as critical. Each crit gives gold, and at the max level, it was 108 gold per second, or close to 400,000 gold per hour. Botting for gold is 10 times faster, but that is much riskier. During this race was when the fish dupe account first came onto the scene. Ochil joined Cade's crit rich parties to defend him, or even to sometimes do it himself. The exploit was patched in the 1.0 update, but not before several interesting things occurred. Cade and Godhack were in a head-to-head -head competition to see who could max out fastest, and they gathered millions of gold. This set two prominent pit groups against each other, the pit cops and the huntsmen. Godhack was protected by the cops, and the huntsmen protected Kadikon. Now, gold isn't the only interesting thing about the wolf exploit. Another part is the raw damage output. Each wolf was hitting the player in dark pants several times per second. Even though the dark pants players weren't damaged, those hits counted towards the damage leaderboard. This is how players were able to deal and receive tens of millions of parts of damage. With that in mind, there's one major event where damage is important, Rage Pit. The winner of the Rage Pit is determined by who can do the most damage, and it was through this exploit that Cade was able to attain the unequivocal Rage Pit world record of 124,000 damage. That is insane. Some months previous, Ochil had traded his Robin Hood to Major Event in exchange for some admin items and information about a duplication glitch. Major had learned from Automize that the double login glitch he had performed in the latter months of 2018 could still be done if the player had an account on Minikun's test server. The only people who had the possibility of accessing the test server, known as Testnet, were members of Conclave, the pit equivalent of Skyblock nerds. After Ocha learned of Testnet, a plan was hatched to get him into Conclave. I was also informed about the potential duplication glitch, and at some point we were all invited to Conclave because of our understanding of the game and enthusiasm for helping it. Given that that exclusive club is devoted to the development of the game, there was a lot of talk about the upcoming 1.0 update, the full release of the pit. One of the things that Ocha learned from the discussion on the new update was that chunks of vial were going to be incredibly valuable. On top of this, there was going to be an item which could upgrade a non-rare mystic enchant by one level. At the time, the most valuable pant enchant in terms of defense was critically funky. Before the update even dropped, I went around using Ochil's funds and bought several pairs of soon-to-be-valuable critically funky pants. After the update dropped, the price of those items increased tremendously. We soon learned the item which allowed the upgrade of enchant was called a gem, and there was a glitch that allowed items to be gemmed multiple times. Right before the update though, Minikloon invited all of Conclave onto testnet for, you guessed it, testing. Major, totally prepared to duplicate as much as possible, saw that double login didn't work. The duplication glitch had been patched and we were left disappointed. 
Despite this, Ochil and I still profited from our insider trading. On April 22nd, 2020, the official release of the pit was announced, and this is when Fishdoop really started to make a name for himself. Ochil went onto the account and used combo XP to get his XP, and hunted and auto-clicked on cakes to get gold. In the new update, Mega Streaks were added, which allowed the players to gain tons more rewards than previously. The long-standing strategy in the game was to build rings around the middle so that the potential victims dropping down from spawn would have more trouble running away. A new Mega Streak in the update, called Hermit, caused a player's blocks to last twice as long, which is definitely helpful for building rings. That being said, it's still super annoying to construct them, so some players began to enlist help. This and the threat that bounty hunters and bee hoppers posed to streakers coalesced into people bringing their friends in to help them with streaks, building rings, and fighting off any potential hunters. Fishdoop was the helper for all the streaks of KDCon, Minor Event, and some of the other huntsmen. The best mega streak for XP on the pit is called To the Moon, and the higher the streak you go, the more true damage you take from normal hits. One of the items I had bought on my own was Critically Funky 2 Sweaty 2 Mirror 1 pants. I knew these pants were incredibly valuable, so I bought them and then double gemmed them to become Crit Funky 3 Sweaty 3 Mirror 1. Mirror blocks true damage, and this meant my new pants were unbelievably useful for moon streaking. As a result, they became worth close to $450. Major asked me to borrow the pants and lended them to KDCon without my permission. I didn't realize it at the time, but there was actually a precedent for Major exhibiting this behavior. In the early part of 2019, when we were involved in the earliest spotting schemes, I asked him who in our group had OQ Mindbot. Major told me, me and Cade have the same account. Moreover, I lended it to Cade without the owner knowing. That's exactly what happened to my pants. Major gave the pants to Cade without informing me, and Cade of course refused to give the pants back. Though Ochil tried to help me, I was $450 in the hole. What made the situation even more complicated was that Cade got stat wiped with the pants on his account. With all this drama that had gone down, I made a video which propelled this channel from obscurity. Since Cade was wiped, Fishdoop's focus went to Minor Event, who became the first Prestige 35 in May 2020. Ochil Fishdoop for him for more than 12 hours every day until he reached max level. Moving forward, he protected various streakers, including myself, and continued to massacre anyone who stood in his way, particularly the pit cops. I cannot understate the influence Fishdoop had on the game. He cheated so hard, the fear he struck into the hearts of innocent and not-so-innocent pit players cannot be overstated. On top of that, even today, people call the act of having a friend protect you while you streak fish duping, all because of Ochil. Towards the end of the year, there was some more massive drama, but this time within the Huntsman. Several members had all their items stolen, leaving Jessica, Major, and Minor Event with the Prophet. Since then, most if not all of the Huntsmen have stopped playing the game. Ochil was one of the players who lost out in that situation, and this really put the nail in the coffin for him when it comes to playing Pit. Ochil himself has moved on to Skyblock, becoming one of the most advanced players and reaching top 20 in server-wide net worth. Long story short, if you get rich, keep the items on an account you never give anyone access to. Don't lend people items without compensation. If you get scammed, create a YouTube empire as a result, and avoid spire events so you don't lose a 62,000 kill streak. My name is Sudi, and if you don't subscribe, KDCon will steal your items.